Hi Tony, what is the experiment that's running here today? So we use accelerator mass spectrometry here. This is a very sensitive technique to quantify rare atoms at extremely low levels. So and you're looking, you're basically sorting through samples finding individual atoms? Exactly, yeah. We have a one specific radionuclide today. This is lead 210, yep. which is naturally existing uh, in our environment at extremely low levels. Yep. And you can measure this via decay counting, yep. but it is more sensitive to directly count the number of atoms in a sample. Uh -huh. and, yeah. and why is this important to us today? Um, what we want to do is actually use this technique to identify background for dark matter detectors, which are extremely pure, and lead 210 would be a impurity and could mimic a dark matter signal. Ah, okay, so if there's too much lead 210, It'll give us a signal and that'll make us think, ah, we found dark matter. Exactly. So we have <laughs> right. to know, either. first we have to reduce the background as much as possible. Uh -huh. By and making then, it pure, removing yes, the lead exactly. 210. Yeah. And the second point is the remaining impurities need to be quantified, yeah. measured or simulated. Uh -huh. And this technique here allows us to be very sensitive at ultra pure detection limits for this kind of applications. Okay, so does that mean you're testing the the stuff that the dark matter experiment will be made of. Yeah, so what we have here in the end, we use sodium iodide as particle detectors for uh -huh. dark matter interaction. So that's a crystal? That becomes a crystal in the yeah. end, and yeah. we use the powder out of which the crystal is made in the end, uh -huh. and look how much uh, impurity is in there. There right. are different impurities. One is lead 210. This is what we investigate today. There are many others which we want to investigate with this technique or there are other techniques available to do this. And we use chemical separation methods to extract the lead out of this yep. and convert it into a form. This is a milligram of material and send it through the particle accelerator and use this particle accelerator as a filter to identify the lead 210 concentration in, this, in the sodium iodide. Right, so the stuff that will one day become a crystal, perfect, very sensitive, is all powdered up at this stage. Yes. And yeah. it might have some lead 210, so you have to do all kinds of chemistry to get that sorted. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is still in the test phase, because when you grow your crystals, you might introduce again lead 210. Yeah. So what we have to do is, we have in the end use a large piece of real crystal, which is used as a detector in the end, yep. and dissolve it again, and extract lead 210 to know if, if for the chain. real crystal yeah. is the okay. same low concentration. As right, in. all this just to find the background level. Yes, yes. And but yeah. I guess that's pretty important though, the background level. The point is that, if you look for dark matter interactions, these are very weak interactions. So the detection rate or the rate with which dark matter would interact with the particle detector is extremely low. Yeah. So any background which could mimic such a signal is extremely interfering. Mm -hmm. We have to know it, we have to reduce it as much as yeah. possible, and we have to measure as good as yeah. possible. Yeah. So the dark matter interactions are going to be on the scale of just one or two individual interactions is that is that the kind of prediction that yeah or the sensitivity you're aiming uh, for yeah there are maybe interactions a few interactions per day right. yeah, and we have to know if there is out of these few interactions per day another four or five coming from background or is it real right. so it can be in the interesting energy regime that the background is dominating but if yeah. we know the background very well, then yeah. we can extract or subtract the background. Okay, so you might have a background right up here, but if there's a little bump on the top, you know, a, yeah. oh. Yeah. yeah, or at least you know that you are not sensitive enough because the background is dominating uh -huh. your, your signal. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. What are the other impurities you might need to look for in the future? It's usually either impurities which are naturally existing, this is lead 210 because it yeah. is a decay product from naturally existing uranium and thorium, uh -huh. they are long-lived and they are at low levels everywhere in our environment. Right. So also the uranium and thorium have to be measured. This yeah. is coming up in the future. We use different techniques now, but we hope here to develop a technique which also allows us to use accelerator mass spectrometry for this. Yeah. And potentially this could help to set the sensitivity limit by another factor of 1,000 or 10,000 uh -huh. lower compared to existing techniques. So this is for the detector that's going to be underground? Exactly, yeah. So a kilometer of rock 
above the detector. Is that, is that where the uranium might be that's giving... Uh, it would be not in the structural material around, it would yeah. be within the detector or surrounding material of oh, the detector housing. Okay. Right. Yeah. So everything else would be under control basically or it is far yeah. away. Right. But okay. it's just the detector itself which is the most critical point. Right. Right. So how, what's the key to getting the super sensitivity that you have here? Is that Explain how AMS works. So AMS basically is a sorting machine. Uh -huh. We have a sample which typically is of the order of one milligram of material yep. this is slowly we call it sputtered we extract a beam out from the sample yep. we negatively ionize it yep. and send it through uh, different sorting filters yep. so this means magnets which are mass sensitive electrostatic filters which are energy sensitive yep. we send it through an accelerator to high energies yep. And in the end, again, we have filters and count individual atoms. Yeah. Important here is using the accelerator destroys basically all molecules, which would have a similar mass like our very rare isotope that we are looking for. Right. So lead 210 has a mass 210. Yeah. In our case, it could also be lead 208 plus two hydrogens. Oh yeah. Or a yeah. Vismos 209 yeah. plus one hydrogen. Yeah. And with the use of the accelerator, the molecules are separated. Mm -hmm. And in the end, having magnets again filters yeah. the 208 and 209 masses away. Right, okay. So that comes whizzing down here? Yeah. And yeah. then and this, this is... one is a big mass filter. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you, you set that to a certain energy, a um, certain magnetic field? Yeah. And that means that only the right ones will make it around the so, corner and the rest of them crash. Exactly. So the right. mass 210 would go straight this line. Yep. And 209 and 208 are a little bit lighter, so they are bent a little bit more and they go upwards and uh -huh. cannot make it the way into the detector. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck finding well, the, the, the lead 210. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.